just when I thought I'd seen everything Nevada had to offer, the Silver State goes and surprises me again. Hello, Wonder Hussy here, barreling down a dusty dirt road in my favorite place, the middle of nowhere, Nevada. And for a place that's as seemingly desolate as the middle of nowhere, Nevada, well, there sure are a lot of interesting things around these parts. And well, I'm kind of on a little tour today. Um, some fans of the channel, some viewers of mine, invited me out here to show me a few interesting sites they have discovered while driving around out here. And well, I figured why not drive out and meet them and see for myself. It's a variety, a smorgasbord, okay? We're gonna see a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We're stopping at, oh, one, two, three, four, four places today. So strap on your seatbelts, grab a cup of coffee, and come along with me as we explore the most desolate Valley in Nevada. Golly, what a beautiful valley. I mean, this, <laughs> this is the best way I can think of to spend a Friday morning. It's a Friday morning, mid, late April. Gorgeous blue sky. It's awesome. Oh my God, look at these little tiny fuzzy baby cows. Oh my, like that one there is so little. I don't even think it's been tagged yet, neither one of those. Oh, little tiny baby just born. Oh, oh I had carne asada fries a couple nights ago. <sighs> Gotta wait for these cows to cross. Can't get through the ravine. Go ahead, guys. Oh my God, that one there is tiny. Holy cow, holy cow. Little tiny baby, oh my goodness. That thing has to be freshly dropped. Go ahead, ladies. No problem. Oh, here comes another tiny baby. That's the nice thing about driving around this time of year. April is like all the little baby animals. Oh, hi, little baby. <laughs> I don't know why I always talk baby talk when I see these baby animals, but they're just, they're so cute. <laughs> it speaks to my barren womb. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. All right, well, I guess I'll proceed with caution. I got to get across this dip without running over any of these adorable cows. Oh my God, I'll never eat a burger again. Oh my goodness, this canyon smells amazing too. It's all sagebrush. Mm -mm. Okay, I think we might have arrived at the first stop on our tour. These awesome charcoal kilns. Holy cow, these are actually really cool. Uh, okay, the people I'm with, they weren't able to their truck they didn't feel confident taking it all the way down this road so i just came up on my own and boy howdy there's one two three of these kind of beehive shaped brick charcoal kilns wow look at you're not supposed to go inside them it says uh danger do not enter loose brick and stone collapse hazard and i believe it because we'll just peek in the doorway here Man, look how old this thing is. And look how sooty the walls are from all that charcoal they made. My understanding of these things is they needed charcoal to stoke the furnaces and all the mines in the area. And so they would come up here into the mountains. Remember, we're in the basin and range part of Nevada. So there's a lot of flat desert basins and then a ton of these little mountain ranges. And so up at the higher elevations of these mountain ranges, well, there's a lot of trees that you can cut down and well, make charcoal out of to stoke them mine furnaces. And these are pretty cool. I just wonder how they made all the brick before they had the charcoal to fire the brick. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a who came first, the chicken or the egg type thing. Okay, let's check this sign in book. Giovanni was here April 4th, 2021. Wow, far out. Okay, well, what's today? April 23rd, Wonder Hussy. Wow, this is cool. How many people actually take the time to come out here and check this stuff out? That's neat. 
I felt the spirit of these mountains and did Tuvan throat singings in the kilns. Wow. You know that Mongolian uh, throat singing they do where they go. Okay, that's just a very crude approximation. I bet that would sound amazing in one of these charcoal kilns. Whew. Officially added to my bucket list. If you are a Tuvan singer or you know a Tuva singer, call me. Okay, back in the rig. I'm going to go meet up with my people again and continue on to the second stop on our little tour of this extremely desolate but apparently very interesting valley. Okay, next stop on the tour. You might recognize this actually because I've already made a video here. This is the site of what's called Project Faultless and essentially, well, it's the remains of the time the government put a giant nuclear weapon in an empty mine chamber underground and the whole area around it collapsed because the top of it was once flush with the ground level. Well, when they detonated the nuke down in the mine chamber, this whole area sunk in and now this thing sticks up Oh gosh, probably like 10, 15 feet. Anyway, I made a whole video about that, so I won't stay here too long. Uh, my friends already took off for the next spot. So let's get back in the car and check out destination number three. Okay, wow, this is amazing. This is stop number three on our tour, and it's an old stagecoach stop. That's right, apparently, uh, I guess there was a stagecoach route that ran, uh, I don't know if it ran from Tonopah to Ely, and well, it came through this totally desolate little valley, and that's a pretty friggin' substantial building for a uber remote stagecoach stop. I mean, you can see, back in those days, they built things to last. You know what I mean? Look at this masonry. It doesn't even look like, I was gonna say, it doesn't even look like there's cement or anything between but yeah there is some kind of adobe or something between these rocks and look how thick the walls were <laughs> keep the heat out in the summer keep the chill out in the winter wow this is so cool look at this wooden floors beautiful hardwood floors and then these walls look like they're plastered over uh, well <laughs> please ignore the graffiti looks like there's been people here over the years 2014 2005, 2019. Oh, July of 92. Norman Lear? Isn't that the producer for uh, All in the Family? <laughs> what was he doing out here? Anyway, uh, yeah, look at the plastered walls. I mean, it is kind of creepy over there. You can see the drippy stains. Here you can see the construction. There's the rough rock behind it, and then they just kind of, what, stucco or plaster or what? But then look at the ceiling. I mean, the roof is mostly gone, but man, this place was really constructed nicely. Looks like there was some kind of chimney there. I don't really know how it worked with a stagecoach, but I guess you, this is the main front room you would come to. Like, was it like a waiting room, like with a, a railroad station? You just sat here and waited for the next coach? Or because it's such desolate country, maybe people stayed overnight here waiting for the next coach? I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty big building. There's this whole room here, then there's this second room here. This room has a door that leads out back. Uh, not much out back. But you can see there's a there's another room there. So it's a three room building. That first room that we, we walked into is through that door. Then it went back into this back room. And then there was that little side room. What a trip. Oh, and then you can even kind of see the, oh, there's the chimney, I see going up through what used to be the attic. Look at this. It's amazing that stuff like this is still sitting out here and it hasn't been destroyed or really defaced other than that graffiti. I don't know what year this stagecoach stop dates from and my friends didn't know either, but definitely sometime in the 1800s. <laughs> they don't make them like this anymore. I mean, it's, it's actually incredible to me that this place was probably built 150 years ago and it's still essentially livable. I mean, you'd have to put on a new roof, but the walls, the floor, I mean, just clean out all this debris. You could probably live for the summer anyways. You could probably live pretty comfortably in here. Oh, look at the view through this window. The West. Wow, this little tour is turning out to be super cool and super representative of Nevada history because 
Well, the first stop we had was to do with the mining industry, those charcoal kilns. Uh, the second stop has had to do with the atomic energy industry, which is a huge part of Nevada history. And then this here was, uh, well, the stagecoach. And then the fourth stop, well, I'll let you guess. <laughs> We've been to mining, atomic, stagecoach. What else would you need to visit to make a tour of a desolate Nevada Valley complete? Okay, I gotta grab some of this sagebrush. It smells so good. Even if I don't have a sage tanning, I'll just keep it in my car. Mmm, oh my god. I don't care who you are, that's one of the best smells in the world. Now that I think about it, uh, well, when I started this trip, I actually forgot to bring my clothes bag with me, if you've been following me on this trip. Well, I had all my clothes packed, and I friggin' forgot the bag in my dressing room, so I'm stuck wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Well, I do have one extra pair of undies, at least, but I'm stuck wearing the same t-shirt every day. So the sage might come in handy for, you know, freshening things up, so to speak. Okay, last stop on the tour. I told you this was going to be all of the typical highlights of the middle of nowhere Nevada. And so it stands to reason that this last stop is a hot spring. Oh my God, and what a hot spring it is. Look at this. Holy moly, in the middle of this very, very desolate valley, this gorgeous crystal clear pool Lovingly built up with rocks, almost looks like paver stones. Look at that little bench there to sit in. Wow, wee, what an unexpected delight in this crazy barren landscape. I mean, look at this. This almost looks like those hot spring ponds you see by Yellowstone, you know, the Grand Prismatic Pool. Look at the colors on that, the texture. Holy Battleborn. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in all of the state of Nevada unbelievable and well you can bet your sweet bippy i'm gonna get in that hot spring and go for a soak unfortunately it wasn't quite hot enough when we got here uh i guess one of the last people here had uh plugged up the uh the out i don't know what you call that the pipe where the hot water is coming out which is coming out out of this and flowing down into the little pool uh, so we unblocked that and the pool is filling with hot water uh the friends that i came with they're going for a soak now uh, and then when they leave, <laughs> this is the last stop on our tour, so they're going to leave me to my own devices, which means I can get naked and go for a little skinny dip the way I like to. But they don't want to be on camera, or I should say two of the three of them don't want to be on camera. So I'm going to let them have their time soaking, and while they do that, I'm just going to kind of poke around the grounds and see what else is out here. Okay, let's start out by doing a 360 pan. Kind of a marshy, silty, boggy sagebrush plain with really interesting i don't know if i'd call those mineral formations or just sort of crusty mineral bog the wind dancing on the top of the water there might even be able to see there's steam coming off it over there the source must be super hot here and then it comes down gets real red there and this part here is super interesting right before it feeds into the little pond over there look at these weird formations man they're like i guess these are some kind of mushroom oh man i really want to touch one of them but i'm afraid the water might be super hot let me see let's test it oh it's not super duper hot okay i'm guessing these are going to be kind of mushy springy mushroomy oh my god they are oh wow i wish you guys could feel this it feels like <sighs> Well, it's harder at the bottom, so it's kind of calcified, and this top part is real spongy. So these are almost like the little tufa towers in Mono Lake, maybe? Oh my goodness. I hope I'm not destroying anything by doing this, but this is fascinating. These formations, they're kind of like, almost looks like bone or calcium or something. It feels, oh, it's, ah, wow! Ah! I mean, I don't think I'm destroying anything uh, super rare by doing this, but it's kind of like the consistency of a corn cob. I'm gonna be a little squishier than a corn cob. Sorry, guy. 
Okay, I guess I'll, there's probably environmentalists watching this that are flipping out that I just did that. So I'll stop now, but oh my god, I can't help it. I'm a very tactile person and, and these textures and oh my god, it's just amazing. And then look at these orange ones over here. These look like they're going to be a little slimier. Oh, they are. It's like some kind of weird algae on top of it. Wow, we this is amazing. And there's just tons of them as far as the eye can see. Look. And you can see it runs down here. And that's the intake that goes into the hot spring pool. That pipe runs right under the berm here and it comes out in the pool. And then there's this path that leads from the pool back to where we parked. And it's pretty hard packed mud. I can see where it would get pretty boggy if it had rained or snowed recently, like a little bridge. <laughs> Doo -doo. And there's a campfire ring here. This would be an unbelievable place to camp. I mean, can you imagine what the stars would be like out here? Oh, look, <laughs> there's my, see, that's my one friend there, Paula, sitting in the pool. She's the only one who said she wants to be on camera, so I'll show her. But wow, what a view. Holy cow. Oh, here's a sign. What does this say? Oh, look, litter. Pick that up. Someone was eating pickles. <laughs> Why not? Pickles in the hot spring. Oh, look. Yeah, the government was here and they put up a sign. Danger. Hot water. Water from natural hot springs may be scalding. This area is not maintained as a public recreation or use area by the Bureau of Land Management. Interesting. Oh, holy cow. Look at this freaking source pool. <laughs> wow, wee. This looks like, this totally looks like something out of Yosemite. I mean, uh, Yellowstone. Holy moly. Look how deep that is. Oh my God, I don't want to be like that. those idiots that go to Yellowstone and like break through the crust and boil themselves alive, but this is very firm ground over here. Just want to get a better angle so you guys can see. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I can feel the heat coming off from over here. That's gotta be super hot. I do have my thermometer in the car. Gosh, this is gorgeous. And then look at that orange. I guess that's like mineral buildup because that looks like an actual shelf sort of. That looks like that crusty stuff that people step on and then break through, right? Oh my Lord. We'll all be just when I thought I'd seen everything Nevada had to offer. The Silver State goes and surprises me again. Okay, well, while I'm waiting for my friends to finish their soak, uh, there's one other kind of interesting thing about this. I guess it's really more about the camp area. And it's right up here in this beautiful patch of sagebrush. Kind of interesting, there's even trees growing here. I guess these kinds of plants are able to survive off of this super mineral rich water. I wouldn't. Uh, expect that you know i'd expect only some kind of really hardy weird alien looking plants to be able to survive off of that water but i mean these all look like your fairly standard you know desert plants but what i wanted to show you was well first of all you can see this awesome sand that we're walking along it's almost like being in the dunes at the beach in the dunes by the cape but then there's a little surprise hiding back up here among the sagebrush it's a toilet ding 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 holy cow look at this lonely little toilet out in the middle of nowhere you can see they made it by just turning a big bucket upside down that's just like a big farm supply bucket like you would get at a feed store and then they set a Toilet seat onto it. Uh, I won't open it and gross you guys out, but how cute is that? That's probably the most scenic toilet in the USA right there. And I should know because I've sat on uh, more than one scenic toilet. Matter of fact, I already used this toilet when we first got here. I had to take a tinkle and well, instead of just squatting in the bushes like I normally do, I thought I'd be fancy and have a seat on the desert throne. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I might as well just go ahead and slip into my bathrobe and get ready for when I do get the chance for a soak. Uh, luckily for me, I have that right here in the back of my rig. <laughs> Zipped up in my trusty pillowcase. Haha, -ha. now I'm ready. My downside is once I get in this hot spring, I'm never gonna wanna leave. If I didn't already have a room booked for tonight, well, 30 degrees or no 30 degrees, I would definitely consider camping here. 
Okay, it's the moment of truth. My friends have finished soaking and it's my turn to get naked. But before I do that, I just wanna thank the friend who took the time to put this little itinerary together and take me on this beautiful tour of the middle of nowhere, Nevada, Paula. Paula, thank you so much for coming up with this amazing day. It's been a pleasure. It really has it been. Has. We'll have to do it again. We will. Hugs. Definitely. Mm. Paula's good people. Yes. Safe travels, Paula. I'll okay. see you at the next hot spring. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> careful is my middle name. All right, there they go. You know what that means. It's time to drop trowel. Ah, oh yeah. Yeah, right back in this corner where the hottest water is coming out. Not gonna lie, it's still not quite hot enough for me, but let me put it to you this way. It's warmer than the shower at the hotel where I'm staying in Ely. Ah, wow, this is heavenly. I the whole tub to myself. No one around, just the way I like it. What a great way to end a fantastic day exploring my beautiful home state of fabulous Nevada, where even the most desolate valley is full of wonders.